Well, well, what are you up to? How you doing? It's Todd Feinberg. It's Tuesday. What an amazing thing is going on in Hartford today. The, uh, <laughs> the Senate is having a debate over the nomination of Andrew McDonald, who is a member of the Supreme Court. But And he's a close friend of the governor, and he was a senator, and he worked in the governor's office, and then the governor put him on the court. Now the governor wants to make him the Supreme Court justice, and Republicans have united against him for a variety of reasons, which we will discuss. But what's fascinating, it's amazing to me that this amazing drama is going on. Did I just say amazing twice in one sentence, like three words apart? This incredible drama is going on, and it's not really penetrating. It's more an internal fight. But what the um, what the Democrats are trying to do, and Governor Malloy is trying to do, is since Republicans are going to reject and block this nomination for Chief Justice, the Democrats are putting on a demonstration of just how sleazy politics has become and that is that you don't let any crisis go to waste you remember that Rahm Emanuel expression so because they're losing they have to figure out a way to get something out of the loss and to punish Republicans for opposing this nominee who's a very questionable nominee it seems to me and what they're doing is saying it's because Andrew McDonald is gay that the reason he's being blocked, even though he was a member of the state Senate for years, so people know him and a lot of people like him on both sides, even though he was nominated overwhelmingly, approved overwhelmingly to serve on the Supreme Court after he was nominated by Governor Malloy uh, several years ago, the reason he's being blocked now is because he's gay. Like, out of thin air, the governor invents this reason and it's in order to have a campaign to damage Republicans for having done what is is their prerogative to reject this nominee it's a, it's really interesting and I I wish you had time to sit around and watch um, things as tedious as debate going on in the Senate which you can watch on on the CTN network but you know Who's got time for that? Except me and Rob Sampson, who's a state representative from Wolcott. Rob, welcome back to WTIC. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us. Always delighted to join you, Todd. All right. Did, did I uh, lay that out effectively enough? Yes. No, I especially like the, uh, the use of the word sleazy because that's exactly what it is. All right. Explain uh, why. Explain what... The governor is saying and, and others are saying other it's not just the governor uh yeah. you know i have not watched the entire debate but i have seen several of the democrat senators get up and make more or less direct uh accusations well let alone inferences that uh anyone that opposes the appointment of andrew mcdonald as chief dust justice of the supreme court is doing it purely and solely because of his uh sexual preference and that is the most disgusting and dishonest display of sleaze that I can possibly imagine taking place in uh, a place that requires decorum, the Connecticut State Senate. Explain why you can make that absolute statement when, uh, you know, Republicans in the past have, have uh, opposed people on the basis of sexual preference and used to be uncomfortable with it, don't seem to be anymore. Uh, there's been an evolution over recent years, has there not? Yeah, I, I'm not even aware of an evolution. I have served in the uh, state legislature since 2011, and I cannot recall a single time when a member of the legislature in the House or Senate of either party has made a comment to me or uh, indicated in any way, shape, or form that they were making a decision about someone's fitness uh, as a candidate uh, for office or for the judicial branch based on their sexual preference. And um, there have been uh, countless uh, uh, gay Republicans uh, who have, uh, I would say countless, we could count them, though. <laughs> um, there was a, uh, a uh, state representative uh, John Scott, who I served one term with, uh, a good friend and someone that uh, was my right hand on the uh, insurance committee for uh, several years, um, 
there was a candidate for uh, Congress in the 5th District the last time around uh, who was an openly gay man and uh, supported by the Republican Party, endorsed by the Republican Party, got the uh, uh, delegates uh, at the convention uh, to run as the Republican candidate. I think the day and age that uh, people are making uh, uh, distinctions based on that uh, have long since passed. And certainly in the case of Andrew McDonald, it is his uh, judicial activism and temperament that is at issue and not his uh, sexual identity. How can um, people understand this? What are the best facts that you can present to convince uh, those who might be suspicious about Republicans' motives? Uh, So we wouldn't expect Republicans to say that they're opposing somebody because he's gay. But is it possible to prove that it's a specious argument? I could simply make the argument uh, for why I would vote no and uh, other Republicans uh, would do the same uh, based on the things I just mentioned, his uh, his judicial uh, activism and temperament. Uh, and I can uh, point to um, uh, in, in cases where uh, Republicans have shown no desire to uh, dispute someone's uh, <laughs> sexual preference. But beyond that, I don't know how. And I think that's the danger of why uh, Governor Malloy and Senator Bayh, who recently spoke on the floor of the Senate, uh, are able to continue to get away with these things. They can do any kind of slander and libel uh, with absolutely no uh, penalty uh, because they're talking about people in politics. Uh, and that's shameful. Well, I guess one thing that could be pointed to, uh, we're talking to Rob Sampson. He's a state representative from Wolk. And we were both watching the, the coverage this afternoon and, and getting appalled by what we were seeing because, as Rob is saying, you can't really defend against an accusation that somebody makes that something is happening for an invisible motive. And except, I guess, to point out that there were Democrats who, on your side of things, Rob, who voted for uh, uh, the same way as Republicans did, who voted against Justice McDonald. So by implication, if if the governor and others are going to imagine that Republicans are against Justice McDonald being promoted to chief justice because he's gay, then the Democrats, you would have to use the same logic to say the Democrats are opposing him for the same reason. Yes, because what other reason could there possibly be since exactly. they have uh, tried to make the argument that uh, Andrew McDonald is the most qualified person ever to be appointed to the court in Connecticut? Uh, in fact, someone just said that uh, he, he should be a, a Supreme Court justice on the federal level because he is so qualified. Wow. Uh, I don't doubt that he's an intelligent man and he has a very uh, uh, extensive background, although he does not have an extensive background as a judge. He was appointed to the Supreme Court without ever serving as a judge before, uh, which is uh, an almost uh, remarkable uh, point in and of itself. And I voted for him back when that uh, voted against him back when that happened. Uh, But uh, that was less of an issue at the time, uh, what his uh, sexual preference was. It's only come to light now that the Democrats have their backs up against the wall. They're about to lose the next election in Connecticut, and they are trying to do the most radical things as if they, they can on the way out the door, including the appointment of someone to the Supreme Court uh, as Chief Justice, who is a tremendous partisan with an activist background, and they're getting pushback. Uh, things are not as easy as they once were, and now that they are being faced with, uh, uh, you know, not being able to get their way and uh, fear that they're not going to come back in the majority, uh, they're lashing out in a lot of directions. You so you see this anyone. as you see the appointment of the governor's political buddy, or however you would describe Andrew McDonald, as as one of these things the Democrats are doing on their way out the door. They see defeat on the horizon, and they're trying to pack in as many favors for their allies as possible before they suffer a big loss in November. Absolutely. I mean, the session began uh, last year uh, with the passage of the uh, labor agreement, the big union deal that carries these uh, cushy uh, pension uh, arrangements all the way out till uh, 2027 with built-in raises and bonuses and all kinds of things, uh, things that could never uh, happen uh, under different circumstances and things they wouldn't dare to do uh, unless they were in danger of losing control and wanting to lock that in uh, for as long a term as possible. Are you surprised by this move by the Democrats? Do you, 
would you have thought that they would uh, have a more civilized response? I'm afraid I, I have to say no. After witnessing the uh, most recent presidential election and uh, uh, the Democrat candidate for president's uh, constant uh, use of identity politics to try and categorize different people based on their gender or their race and to uh, divide Americans uh, instead of uniting us under the principles of this great country. They want to put people into different groups and pit them against one another. Anyone that opposes uh, Democrats in power is immediately labeled as someone who is hate-filled or somehow um, uh, dangerous. Uh, Governor Malloy just recently uh, speaking about uh, Republicans who uh, refused to support his gun control measures as having blood on their hands. Uh, certainly that's an absurd statement. Uh, there's no legislators responsible for committing acts of uh, mur- murder or crime as far as guns go, uh, but uh, they managed to get away with it. Rob Sampson, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with